What's up guys? Welcome back to another simplified astrophysics video. In this video, I'm going to be doing a profile of the great Indian astrophysicist Subramanian Chandrasekhar. We're going to be looking at his work and his backstory. I did something similar on the great German-Jewish astrophysicist Karl Schwarzschild. You can check out that video here. Now stick around while I run the intro. Alright, so when I hear the name Subramanian Chandrasekhar, I generally think of the Chandrasekhar limit, which is essentially a brilliant mathematical physical proof that has to do with some white dwarfs, some stars, and black holes. Now let's see how we got there. Chandrasekhar grew up in southern colonial India, where his dad was a math professor. When Chandrasekhar expressed interest into going into math, his dad was like, uh-oh, and then his dad told him, Son, you know, why don't you try some physics classes instead? Trendshaker tried a few physics classes, and he did, I guess, pretty well. Within two years, he published research on Compton scattering, and he finished his bachelor's degree in physics before he even reached his 20th birthday. Then, he set sail for Cambridge University, where he decided to pursue his PhD in physics on a full scholarship. While at Cambridge, Chandra focused on studying white dwarfs, which are a type of star. Chandra researched their gas, their internal pressure, their hydrostatic equilibrium. This is basically a lot of math and specifically a lot of differential equations. It was through that work that he devised the Chandrasekhar limit. Now here's what the Chandrasekhar limit is. 1.4. Yes, 1.4. Now what does that mean? Well, through extensive calculations, Trendleshaker found out that the maximum mass for a white dwarf star to remain stable is about 1.4 solar masses, 1.4 times the mass of our sun, which is also about 27650000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
Whoa, this is awesome. I grew up reading about this guy. Is he about to congratulate me and accept my research without any questions? But Eddington had zero intention to congratulate. In fact, he did anything but congratulate. He got up there and ridiculed Chandrasekhar's work. He was particularly bugged by the idea of black holes, saying, I think there should be a law of nature to prevent a star from behaving in this absurd way. Given that Eddington was probably the most respected astrophysicist of the time, many people didn't take Chandrasekhar's side. After all, his research might have just been a bit too new for the time. Chandrasekhar was really embarrassed by being ridiculed, attacked, and harassed by one of the most respected astrophysicists of the time. He sort of ran away from England and he landed in America. Here he took up a few jobs before he finally landed up a full professorship at the University of Chicago where he spent the rest of his life. Chandrasekhar spent the rest of his life working on astrophysics. In World War II, he honorably worked for the U.S. Army's Ballistic Research Laboratory where he researched ballistics and weapons for the fight against fascism. Because of his expertise in hydrodynamics, Robert Oppenheimer wanted Chandrasekhar to join him on the Manhattan Project to build the nuclear weapon. Chandrasekhar unfortunately wasn't able to join them because of some bureaucratic delays. Chandrasekhar continued his work at U Chicago, where he was the editor of the Astrophysical Journal. He notably allowed Eugene Parker to publish his work on solar winds when many others didn't. You may be wondering about the legacy of the Chandrasekhar limit. Like all things in science, it took a while for people to accept it. But after many verifications, including some by some computers, it was verified as correct. It is still unknown as to why Eddington even ridiculed it so much. In 1983, Subramanian Chandrasekhar received the Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on white dwarfs and the limit. Chandrasekhar leaves behind a great legacy in astrophysics. In 1979, NASA created the Chandra X-ray Observatory, which uses X-rays to detect the universe. Astrophysicists use data from this facility to detect dark matter, dwarf galaxies, black hole components, supernova shock waves, and so much more. Subramanian and Chandrasekhar really goes down as one of the most accomplished astrophysicists and is considered a great Indian American astronomer. Well, that's all I got for today. Hopefully you learned something new. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment too. I love hearing what y'all have to say. And one thing I want to hear from you guys is what other astrophysicists do you want to hear about? Annie Jump Cannon, George Lemaitre, let me know down below. I will see you soon. <laughs>